And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, episode 7 of The Lockup, presented by Comics Remix. I'm your host, Big B, Brian Adams. Joining me as always, my co-host, Munchin' on Ritz. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm going to be eating crackers. Well, I've got another five crackers. Yeah, you almost done it. It's not like that time you had tacos. No, I missed that. Though. The taco episode. There'll be another. Where everything says, like, <laughs> <laughs> I was hungry. Yeah, hey, hey, next, I won't do tacos next time. I'll do a, I'll do a quesadilla and a five layer. Yeah, those are good, man. Oh yeah, and they're quiet. Five layers? I thought they were sevens. You don't do the sevens? It's five. I could have swore it was seven. Oh, for you it's five. What do you don't like that guacamole? No, I love guac. Hell no. But anyway, it's this simple. is <laughs> it's just the <laughs> ha ha ha. You slipped. It's on you You're this time. Me. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> this is turned into freaking Brian and Junior's food talk. That's how it. They'd probably is. get more views. It probably would. <laughs> Foodies with Brian and Junior. Today we will discuss the little dishes. <laughs> They're so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you're just trying to pay attention to us, this is the lockup. We're gonna talk some wrestling, as always. Uh. First thing I'm going to get out the gate, because I love to get this out every episode so far. We've been doing this for seven now. TNA still sucks. Won't be talking about it at all. That's all. That's Actually, that's, yeah, we got to mention it. Well, yeah, that's the slight. They might get a bunch later on, but that's about it. TNA sucks. <laughs> um, first thing, playing off of the news we were leaving with. Hold on, I finished munching this cracker. It's not that TNA sucks as a whole. Because they have great talent. No, yeah, there's, and I've said that before. And that's as far as TNA has, that's, that's the main thing TNA has going for, is their talent. Unbelievable talent. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, that's it. There's, like, we talk about how, like, we wish that uh, they would do different things with WWE creatively. Well, they, It TNA, makes you appreciate yeah, what it they do now it as, does. when you watch TNA. Like, TNA could use, at least, like, a percentage of that lack of creativity that WWE has, and it would be that much better. It's and like maybe, that one episode of Raw and SmackDown where Roman Reigns was making the Jack and the Beanstalk references, the big show, remember? Yeah. I think that moment they hired, hey, let's bring in this guy from TNA. And they <laughs> did that, and then they're like, okay, you can go back. They're like, all right, this isn't, this isn't working at all. But uh, playing off of the end of uh, Breaking the Fourth Wall from Monday, Mm-hmm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. I know this isn't really wrestling, but you'll see where it ties in. Uh, Rocksteady. Has been cast, and it's Seamus. All right, the Celtic Warrior. It's going to be our Rocksteady. Yeah. Dude, when you first told me that, which I don't know how that got past me. In me the, In the t- two weeks it's been since we were sat down to record. I really don't know, but the footage. The, the, the photos. The we're footage. still talking about food here? I almost said footage. The photos. <laughs> Looks good. I liked the photos. Mm-hmm. And it's nice to see Seamus, you know, doing something that might actually interest me outside of the boring <laughs> shtick that he's been stuck into, pigeonholed into in WWE right. as of late. Looks good. No, I'm excited for it. The only thing that I question is whether Rocksteady, in his mutated form, will have the Irish. Act. Will, will Seamus voice him as a mutant or will they change his voice entirely? That's the only question I have. Like, will they hire a voice actor for yeah. Seamus to... Not not for Seamus. I mean, for, for when mutated. he becomes Rocksteady. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe Seamus has some talents that we're not aware of, you know? Very true. I mean, maybe Seamus isn't as uh, fella as we all think, you know? Mm-hmm. That's my big thing is I would love if they if they throw a fella in there. Oh, that would be Cause, great. Because, you know, movies, anytime there's a wrestling movie, there's always nods to stuff. Yeah. In action movies, The Rock is rock bottom people. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I don't know if Triple H has ever pedigreed anybody in his movies, but Hulk Hogan's done leg drops. Of course, Hulk Hogan's done movies about being a wrestler, so I guess that doesn't really count. Right. Um, Suburban Commando is his best movie. Suburban Commando, dude. The Undertaker is the villain. You're a dead man, Randy. That's good stuff, man. <laughs> That's good stuff. No, you didn't like No Holds Barred with Zeus. No, nah, man. Tiny Lester, Zeus. Do you know he's married to Felicia in real life? Who? Tiny, uh, Tiny Lister. Really? Debo and Felicia from Friday. Really? They're married in real life. Wow. Yeah. Bye, Felicia. Wow. That's crazy. I didn't ever... Side note. Yeah, I never thought that. Useless facts. Useless facts. We're full... We could have a show called 
Brian Jr.'s useless facts. Yeah. I can't yeah, I said that now I can't think of a single useless fact at all. <laughs> um, but continuing on TMNT. Yeah. I'm excited to with that, man. Stephen Amell. Stephen Amell's Casey Jones, which we've, just, we've, we've we, talked we, about. We talked about that. But not really Casey Jones, but the fact that he was at Raw finally, a couple weeks ago. Finally. finally. For months, this man has been petitioning to uh, work an angle or host Monday Night Raw because he's a big wrestling fan. Mm-hmm. So finally, they have him sitting front row at Monday Night Raw. And they have him squaring up, it looks like, with Stardust. Right. Who apparently believes that he's actually Green Arrow. Yeah. That's the angle they're spinning on. That Stardust actually believes that he's really Green Arrow. That Amel is really yeah. Green Arrow? That it's not just the character he plays, but he, that he's actually Green Arrow. You know what? And that works for the fact that Stardust is such a character. that they Like like when he came out, like when he first started debuting, my girl's dad was just like, dude, he looks like a Batman villain. He's like, the guy's a loony. You know, like he could have played a better Riddler than Carrie. Right, and now he's got the Sinister cape going. Yeah, the Mr. Sinister look. When he debuted that at WrestleMania, dude, I lost it. It was great. It's a great look, I can't wait for that Elite to come out. So it it looks like we're finally going to get that, I would hope. Yeah. I mean, because in my opinion, you know, Stephen Amell would be a way better special guest celebrity host of Raw than the dudes from Entourage. Oh, yeah. I could see, you know, like the the reason he comes to host it is because of a, a ringside altercation between Stardust and Amel, and then you know the following week, oh, we're gonna have Stephen Amel on the show so he can air, you know, so he can call out Gold or Stardust, excuse me, and then they go from there, you know. Which and now it makes even more sense in light that Sheamus is gonna be rock steady in TNT mm-hmm. too. Yeah. So it kind of plays into. So I could see it. Cross promotion. I don't think. I think as much so as, you like... you know, next year when they start really pushing the promoting of TMNT to Stephen Amell, whether he does it this year, he'll definitely do it next year. He oh, will yeah. guest host Monday Night Raw. And totally. him and Sheamus are going to plug Turtles. Totally. So does that mean that they're going to have to flip Sheamus back to face just to do that? Who knows? Because he's playing a heel, so who knows? Yeah, his, his heel angle doesn't really work. And then they'll probably have uh, the guy who's playing Bebop on there as well. He's like, oh, this is my partner in crime. There's just so many ways they can go with it. But then at that point, they'll hire TNA Creative again and they'll screw it all up. Yeah, totally. TNA Creative, those... Just, For those not really sure, no, T, they never really hired TNA Creative. It's just a joke. Yeah, totally. If you think they hire... There's, obviously, you don't know what the internet is. <laughs> so yeah, Someone, I'm sure people could be Googling steady. that. Like, if they listen, they'd be like, all right. Seamus is Rocksteady and Turtles. And Stephen Amell plays Casey Jones and Turtles, coincidentally. But also is now being part... If a looks like a storyline, so that's I'm yeah. I hope so, man. It's you know they've uh, apparently Stardust has been tweeting at a Melly Wood, yeah, making threats to Green Arrow. Yeah, who knows? We'll see. Would Stephen Amell? I, I'm sure he would wrestle, dude. If they oh, let dude, him. have you seen the videos he posts of him doing his workouts? The guy, yeah, he's a beast, athlete. dude. He's a beast. He's an athlete. He reminds me of John Morrison with that parkour stuff. Yeah, he's a, or excuse me, Johnny Mundo. Yeah, Johnny Mundo. Who's a, a beast over at Lucha Underground, which is still freaking awesome. Yeah. That trios, man. Speaking of other shows, though, Ring of Honor is now coming to Destination America, home of TNA Impact. And it's supposed to air one hour before, or leading into TNA Impact. So they're going to have like a wrestling block. So you get three hours of wrestling every Wednesday. <laughs> oh, so yeah, that's right. They moved it's to Wednesdays be, yeah, now. Yeah, so it's going to be from 7 to 8, our time, Central Time. You'll get... Ring of Honor, and then from 8 to 10 you get in. See, I'm really excited about that because I've read a lot of good things, but I haven't taken the time to try and, like, watch shows on the internet. Yeah. Like, I'm an older guy. I'm not really into... I'm not hip with the watching TV on the interweb. It's not... just not something I like to do. Right. And it, But I'm aware of Ring of Honor. I've heard good things about Ring of Honor. I've seen some of the talent that's come out of Ring of Honor that's went other places. I'm excited to see this. And it's got to be better than TNA. Yeah. Now the question is: so they're so they're still TNA still sticking around though, huh? For now, they Destination America has went on and said that they're going to cancel TNA, or at least that's the rumor. Um, TNA has not addressed this in any way, shape, or form. The you know, well, they Destination has announced that they have not renewed TNA's contract for the next TV season. So for what we know, Ring of Honor might either help TNA. 
or it might just be a cheaper replacement for DNA. We don't know, you know? It's a wait-and-see situation. It's a wait-and-see situation. Well, hey, whatever happens, man, I'm sure Ring of Honor will be way, way better yeah. than TNA. Um, I don't think any of it could be better than NXT. Right now, like... Oh, NXT is killing it, man. I was telling Melissa the other day that for me right now, with all the wrestling I watch, like I probably watch 15 hours of wrestling a week. And I'm lucky if I get an hour. The two hours that are the best are NXT and Lucha Underground. Mm -hmm. Like, those are the most solid two hours of wrestling you watch. I could honestly quit watching all the other stuff and just focus on that and probably be fine. Right. But, you know, I'm a WWE fan at heart, so I have to watch it even though I think it sucks. Yeah. Um, Pay-per-views, you know. Not even pay-per-views anymore. Like, tonight is the Elimination Chamber, so by the time you hear this... Elimination yeah. Chamber will have happened, but it's not. It's an, a network exclusive. It's not available to order. Oh, I'm really? It's yeah. not available. So, oh, it is only on the network. So, do you think that that's an attempt by WWE to like? I would really th couldn't imagine that they would want to completely ditch pay per view though. No, I think it's one of because it was added on very last minute. Uh -huh. You know, it was announced what like a month ago. So yeah. I think it was one of those things where they're trying to do it to entice more subscribers. I mean, they have. We've talked about the network before. The network has a lot of things to offer, but they need to offer more. Like we talked about Corey Graves' show, and then I talked. I told you the other day that I was watching uh, Renee Young's show. Now she's good. And she's good at what she does. She's good in front of a camera. Yeah, she knows totally. how to speak. She's she's something that to only give her seven minutes though. Yeah. It's kind of a travesty, especially with the, like, they're so, like, and for someone like me that I really love the behind-the-scenes stuff of wrestling, um, to see her sit down and talk to wrestlers and find stuff out about them you didn't know, like, finding out that Wade Barrett has a degree in marine biology, you know, finding out, like, what kind of a, getting a, a, a more personal look at Seth Rollins, who to me is, at this point, up to this point, been kind of, like, guarded. I really didn't know much about his personality because they don't show it. Right. So it was nice to see the other side of the coin for him. Um, I would have liked to have seen a whole half an hour with them talking. Yeah. I got seven minutes and it like wasn't enough. Same thing with Barrett. Really well, interesting they need to, guy. They need to do something to make sure she's going to stay around because when her contract expires, word is that ESPN is making a big money offer to her. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because so they, they could, want her ESPN and I forgot who they, there was another station. They could lose her like they lost Coach. Yeah, but nobody would care if... I mean, nobody cared when Coach left. Yeah, I, I Did didn't really like make Coach an either. Did an impact anywhere else? No, he didn't. But he's got that show on what ESPN. Show? See, I didn't know that. He's on the radio. That's what I mean. Yeah, I don't care. It sucks for Coach, man. See, so what Renee Young has, like, you'd have to see, is she happy where she's at? Is she getting paid enough? Those are the main two things, because she's dating Dean Ambrose, so... I could see her wanting to stay there. Otherwise, if she leaves, who knows how that will affect the relationship. It also depends on how close they are, you know. But Oh, my God. Back to back to Raw for a minute. I actually was going to mention this when we were talking about Stephen Mellett Raw and Entourage being there. That John Cena match against uh, woo, woo, woo. Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder. Dude, Zack Ryder really impressed me, man. Zack like, Ryder, they just don't push him. He's that guy's got some in ring skills. Mm -hmm. That big ass dude, top rope, three sixty splash. I was impressed, man. I didn't know that he was capable of the performance that he gave. Mm -hmm. um, that guy needs a new shtick, dude. That's, I think that's like the problem with eighty percent of WWE's guys is that they need new shticks. Well, his shtick is pretty much his own thing. He came that's up with true. that, you know, and that's why he got over so much. What the uh, with the internet fans. Yeah, what, and what happened with that? That just it just died out for him? He wasn't getting the push, man. WWE, they, they gave him that small push when he was dating, quote-unquote, dating Eve, remember? Eve Torres. And then, like, at WrestleMania, it was, like, Team Johnny versus Team uh, Teddy. And, like, she, like, betrayed him, and she gave him a low blow, and then the other team won, and she became a villain. And she was, like, John Laurinaitis' assistant. You remember all that stuff? Yeah, I think and that led into like the beef with him and Kane, I think. And then Kane, like, he was in the wheelchair and Kane 
threw him off the, the entrance ramp. <laughs> oh, man. This was before I came back to watching. So he had a small push for a while there, and then just that was it. So this, this, this is something I wanted to bring up that I found on uh, Russell's own. Is the Vince, our favorite guy, Vince Russo. You know, the guy that thinks he's, you know, the god of wrestling storylines. I got to give the guy credit. He had some good ones in his day. And then he just turned out a bunch of shit. And that's why he doesn't work wrestling anymore. But apparently, you know, he seems to think that uh, wrestling will die that if it doesn't grow. And I'm going to read you this quote and then we could talk about it. uh, Because I feel like he says some stupid shit here. But, and I quote... Nobody cares about wrestling anymore other than those who care about wrestling. I don't care about wrestling despite the fact that I've been watching since before I ever hit puberty. There's just nothing there. Absolutely nothing to look forward to. It's bland. It's uneventful. It's, well, wrestling. In the last 15 years, everything has changed when it comes to entertainment. Reality TV has taken over the airwaves. Traditional television has been taken over by cutting-edge programming on paid networks. Music has changed. Sports has changed. But yet, the only thing that remains the same is professional wrestling. Just this past week, Rusev didn't leave the ring to go after another wrestler who was making out with his girl in front of him, simply because, for the last 50 years, that imagery wall, imaginary wall, continues to surround the ring, preventing one wrestler from going after another one for who knows why. I've always hated that. But that's always been that way. Why bring it up now? It's always been that way. Because... They do that, so, okay, yeah, you're not going after this guy. Why? Because it makes you want to see the match later when they fight, when he does get his hands on him. It, that, that has always been that way. So why bring like why complain about it now? Yeah, but has that really always been that way, though? I don't feel like... I don't feel like that it's... I, well, how I, many times have you seen something going on? Like, here, here's an example. WrestleMania 20. Well, to say that wrestlers never have a... Like an actual physical conflict outside of like their man, that's not. It it happens just not so often. Like I, like I said, here's here's an example: WrestleMania 20, Chris Jericho versus Christian, where Chris Jericho had Trish Stratus in his corner because they were quote unquote dating. And at the end of the match, she turns on Chris Jericho, sides with Christian. At the end of the match, they go up to the top of the ramp, and Jericho, or excuse me, Christian starts making out with Trish Stratus, and Jericho just stood there and watched it. So this has been going on for a long time. You know. Like, why wouldn't he run up and do something then? If if you're that concerned about it, then why aren't you concerned about when the referee's back is turned and something happens? Why don't they have an instant replay? Why don't they take the announcer's word at something? Like, oh, he didn't. He hit him with this. There's so many things. You know, if everybody's telling the ref, oh, this happened. There's so many things to complain about. You're going to complain about an imaginary wall? The only imaginary wall I see is Vince Russo not having a name for himself anymore, so he's going into the Hulk Hogan business, where it's all about me, me, me. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And that um, really just irritated me, because I like Vince Russo to a point. I listen to his shows, you know, I, I read his, his stuff. But yeah, he has come out and said some really stuff out the side of his mouth sometimes. It's just like, dude, really just sit down. But I'm starting to see that little by little. He's just like, hey, hey, remember me? I'm over here, I'm over here. Like... How much of an analyst is he really? Because an, an analyst is just somebody who studies this genre, and they're a fan. He started as a fan, same as what's to stop us from being like, hey, you know what? We're fans. For some reason, you know, WWE ends up hiring one of us. Oh, we can come up with some storylines. Oh, they catch fire with the fans. Fast forward twenty years later, we're gonna be bitter. We're gonna be like, oh, wrestling sucks. Yeah, it's he's. I don't. It's you know, it's one of those things where it's like. It's, you know, still fighting for that little piece of his limelight, even though, you know, it's, come on. Your day came and went. You were, you were good while you had it. It's everybody complaining that it's not the Attitude Era anymore. Well. Because in the Attitude Era, they got away with a lot more stuff. Yes and no. Also because, like, the storylines do seem kind of bland. I, I really do think they need a little well, bit. They don't need new writers. They need to condense the writers. They need competition, dude. Like, I think that's what I think that's what a people a lot of people fail to realize when they bring up oh the attitude era, the attitude era was born from competition. Oh, I agree. The attitude era became because they didn't have a choice. Yeah. But to do like, they had and who's the competition now? Why? Not? Well, Vince TNA? had a good idea. No. Well, Vince had that good idea back then when he did the, the brand splits. You had Raw mm-hmm. on one and SmackDown. That was great. That was its own competition. 
You know, I didn't watch SmackDown. I mean, there was wrestlers on there that I wanted, but I just didn't watch it. I stayed with Raw. I was a Raw boy. Yeah, I think they need to come but back. But SmackDown to that. was a lot better. If you in in hindsight, Raw had maybe some of the more bigger storylines. Mm-hmm. But if you look at the in ring action, SmackDown had so much more going on. You know. I was saying that a while back when we were talking wrestling. On, I don't even think it was it was before we started doing the lockup. I think it might have been on a a random spinner rack in the past, or it might have just been a conversation we had. That I would like to see the return of the brands because there's such a huge amount of talent in WWE that they're not spotlighting everybody. And then if people were good, you're actually forgetting they were good because they've been out of the light so long. That why not take a chance to split it up a little bit and give these guys more of an opportunity to, you know, get out there and show what they can do. You know what, depending on how much time we have left, at the end of the show, I got an idea, but let's move on. But, uh, so, more WWE talk. Uh, apparently, there was reported that uh, Sasha Banks was injured. <laughs> no. But uh, she came out on Tumblr and said that, no, she didn't, and that's stupid news. Um, more NXT news. Apparently, Kevin Owens has signed a main roster, a main contract. roster contract. I'm, yeah. I'm good with that. But he's going to be doing NXT shows for the next few months, slowly building. Phasing out, yeah. Which it's good. I mean, he. It was just I don't know what it was, man. It was weird for me to see him come in and wrestle John Cena. Or, uh, that's I'm sorry. The match, that's the match I'm looking for. He didn't even wrestle John Cena. He just came out and <laughs> power bombed. Oops, he just came out and power bombed John Cena and just you know d- destroyed him and then disrespected the U.S. title, which uh, was crazy. You know, when was the last time you see somebody disrespect the belt like that? Yeah, it's been a long time. You know, um. Now here, here's, I mean, obviously, like you, I said, by you the time, think Rusev would have been the guy to do that. Yeah, right. Well, by the time this airs, you know, Elimination Chamber results will obviously mm-hmm. been out there. But since I, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you, who wins the night, Owens or Cena? Is the belt on the line? No. If the belt's not on the line, and they truly want to push Owens as the next big dude, then it's Owens. Um, I believe the belt's not on the line. If the belt's on the line, I, it's John Cena. Because I've read that WWE was making John Cena a special belt for the U.S. title. Yeah, I heard that too. So why would he be getting a new U.S. title belt just to, to not have it? You know, hopefully yeah. it's not that stupid spinner belt again because I think it was ridiculous. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. Um, oh, I actually have, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert! I got next Wednesday's uh, results for NXT. It's all right. We don't want to know. No. Well, I I'm just gonna throw down like this is a match I'm really looking forward to, but my boy Finn Balor is gonna be wrestling Baron Corbin. Nice. That is a match, dude, to see. Uh. Also, my boys, Big Cass and Enzo are back in action. Oh yeah. You know, I don't know if you paid attention to our Twitter, but during NXT TakeOver, I was blowing up our Twitter, dude, with NXT Talk, and I made some bold claims that just fell flat, dude. Ouch. And one of them was that they were going to walk out of the, with the belts because their opponents were S-A-W-F-T. Soft! But that didn't happen. Um. Yeah, so anyway, no, the belt is not on the line. It's not. No, then it's Kevin strong, Owens. Uh, Kevin Owens all the way. Strong uh, card tonight. I'm also disappointed my girl Becky Lynch didn't beat Sasha Banks, man. No, I'm looking forward to the tag team chamber match, match, dude. Dude, uh, that's what I said earlier. I'm this so is something I've been that. complaining about since we've been doing this show, is I felt that they weren't taking the talented tag team roster they had to do anything with it. And dude... Have they stepped up the tag team game lately? You get Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose. We know Rollins is going to retain. You know he is. Of because course. Lesnar's coming back at next month. Oh, is he? Yeah, they've already advertised him on like, house shows and stuff. So he'll be yeah. back by the end of June. Um, They'll so, still be a good match, though. Those, yeah. guys are, those guys are good together. They're a cage match, dude. The I, That was good. The IC uh, chamber match. King Barrett versus R-Truth versus Ryback versus Rocksteady. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah. Versus Dolph Ziggler versus Bray Wyatt because Rusev uh, allegedly injured. They said he'll be there, but he's not wrestling. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Um, 
the tag titles, New Day versus Matadors versus the Primetime Players versus the Ascension versus the Lucha Dragons versus Cesaro and Kid. That has the opportunity to steal the night. Dude, that, that should be, should be, and we'll have to talk about this on next week's show, that Results. should be the match of the night. Uh, triple Threat, Divas Match, Paige versus Naomi versus Nikki. Um, in my opinion, Nikki, the Bellas don't, neither one of the Bellas needs the belt right now because they're like probably the top, excuse me, they're the top Divas. Oh, absolutely. They don't need the belt. Um, I feel that they should give it to Naomi because she's due for it. Or, and have her go into a program with Paige yeah. and have Paige win it at SummerSlam because they're talking about having Paige have a big summer going into the fall. So, uh, Bo Dallas versus Neville. Does anybody really yeah, care? That's Adrian Neville. Like, uh, How long did we watch that in NXT for, first yeah. off? And then, first I just don't like Bo Dallas. I like Bo Leave. Like like he's got stick. good gimmick, yeah. but I, I just don't care for him. And then uh, Daniel Bryan will be appearing on a Miz TV segment. On the kickoff. Pre-show, yeah. So, uh, pretty decent card. Uh, looking forward to it. But, uh, yeah, so back to the Kevin Owens-John Cena thing. Um, they need... Who, who's going to beat Cena? That's the thing. Not not just... In, I don't mean tonight. But with Cena being the U.S. champion, who's going to beat him? You know, if, if the unstoppable Rusev couldn't do it, you know? Yeah, I don't... Who's going to do it? Do they give it to somebody like... Okay, we're gonna try to push Reigns again, but this time we're gonna take it on a slower scale, and we'll have him put a, we'll we'll have Cena put him over, and then Reigns becomes a U.S. champ, and you build him from there, and you give him a slow build instead of try to shove him down everybody's throats like they did with the heavyweight belt. I wonder if they're gonna give him, if they're ever gonna give Cena an opportunity to get the big belt again, just to break because he's tied the record right for the most. He's at fifteen, so sixteen's the record. Flair has, has it at sixteen. So will they try, or is they are they just going to leave that Flair's? I don't know. You know, would you want to see John Cena break Flair's record? No. No. Yeah, thinking about it, would you really want Flair over Cena? No. If it was somebody else, maybe, but no. Um, yeah, but Kevin Owens, man, it's you know. I think guys, if they're going to really push Owens, they need the make a huge impact with him. You know, even if Cena wins the night, you know, have him win by something that's like, you know, it's not a clean win. You know, like, he's got to resort to something or the ref doesn't see or Kevin Owens gets disqualified and Cena wins because Kevin goes too far. You know? You know, that would make more logical sense because that's something we've seen out of him already. Yeah. Is that he's pushed oh, the dude, envelope too far. I would far. love, love... For Owens to power bomb Cena outside onto the ring apron the way he's done to Sami Zayn, and that ends the match. So Cena keeps the victory, and and, and or he just can't continue. When the time comes for Kevin Owens to drop that belt, who do you think he's dropping it to? It's either Finn, Hideo, or or Sami. But I'm gonna go ahead and say Finn. No, not even Finn. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say Sami's gonna get it back. You think so? Yeah, that'll be like the ultimate. The he returns and exacts his revenge. And he gets the belt. Well, he's out on an injury again, so... That's what I'm saying. I don't like, know. Like, by I, the time he comes back... You think so? Yeah. It's either him or Atami, because they're playing that angle of where Atami got injured in the parking lot, and Owens is like, I had nothing to do yeah. with it. So I could see him returning and going after Owens. And then you know, he's going to lose this one. It's not going to be Balor, because I was just reading, they have big main roster plans for Balor. I don't think they're going to waste Balor's time down there like that. I think Really? Gonna, yeah. And if he gets it, he'll get it later on. He'll get it from either Sami Zayn or Hideo. I think, you know, I, I don't think Owens and Balor are going to go at it for the I belt. Think if they do, well, they are for the, because he's the number one contender. But Owens will keep it. I think within the next year, just the roster change on the main roster, it's, with the infusion of NXT talent, it's going to be amazing, dude. Well, how much, what, what else do we got to talk about? Uh, you know, I had just this little thing I, I wanted to, to, to talk about with you. Is that apparently uh, Sonny? I don't even want to talk about that because nobody gives a damn. Is doing porn? I, she hasn't signed the contract yet. Like, She's in what? negotiations with it. I've seen a naked photo of Sonny, like yeah. laid on her back with it. It's no, to, no, it's not, not even like twenty years ago. Well, if it was twenty years yeah, ago, yeah, yeah, that's it. Seems kind of like an odd thing to do. Not anymore. It's like who wants to see who wants to see Mama June in a strip club? I, I know I don't. No, but. 
So that's, no, that's pretty much it. So no, what, what, it's not it. How much time? We well, got no, left? I'm saying that oh. was all I have. Gotcha. So all if right. you have something else, let's have a little fun, me. Brian. We want to see the Raw and SmackDown go separate brands. Mm-hmm. Let's do our own Raw draft. Well, let's do our own uh, roster draft. You can be in charge of whatever show. I'll be in charge of the other one. You can have SmackDown because that one sucks. I hey, let's go. I'll, I'll take. SmackDown. I'll take the big show because I'm SmackDown. I'm the big guy. All right. Let's um, go. All right. Who do you draft first? You know, not not to be a a dick, but I, I'm going to take Seth Rollins straight out the gate. Okay. Now, are we just talking current WWE superstars, or? Are we... I'm not talking about, hey, let's draft Chris Benoit. No, obviously not. But, like, are you pulling from the talent pool in NXT, or are you specifically um, sticking to main roster guys as they stand now? I would say just the main roster guys. Okay. You know, with the reserve of when this person is ready to come up, you can take them. So we'll each do two NXT males and one female. Okay. And how many main roster guys are we going to we'll do? Go, we'll go with ten. Okay, all right. Ten. All right, so my I'm, number I'm one. Typing them down. You're my number, number one, one. Your number one draft pick. Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins, okay. I've become a big fan of Seth Rollins in recent months. All right. My number one pick would be Cena. Because the guy draws. Totally. Who Dude, I'm next? looking at the future, son. Who do you got? Who I got next? Who's number two. Number two. Man, I, I hate to say this because it looks like a pattern. And you cannot choose... A tag team is one. No? You got to select. No. You oh, have to I, select well, I, that's by individual. Gonna do. I was going to go with Dean Ambrose. You got to select individuals. Okay, so Ambrose. So it's going to look like I'm leaning towards taking the whole shield, but I like I like Dean Ambrose a lot, dude. Uh, they've packaged him well. I think the whole the crazy man, like he's the, the 21st century Piper, dude. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like him. All right, I go with Roman Reigns. Because that right guy's on. got, he's got potential, but totally. he's got to be built the right way. See, that's good. You, you, you took him, which is stopping me from taking the whole shield, which I wasn't going to do. Right. Because I like Roman Reigns. I see the potential, but I don't like him enough to want him on my show. Who do you got? Third pick. Third pick. Third pick. Wow. Third pick. I'm going to take Neville. Neville? Because that dude's just raw, raw ass talent, man. All right, my third pick is Lesnar. Okay. Have you taken all the big guys? <laughs> all right, so th- I'm going to have to steal the big guy and go with Ryback. I feel like that dude's got so much potential, and they're just now starting to tap into it. That guy only works for me, though, as a face. Ryback? Yeah. Okay. It, he sucks as a heel. He's a better face. And I think he goes over with the crowd more as a face. Not bad. I go with Bray Wyatt. The new face of fear. Man, Bray, and he is he has earned that moniker, in my opinion. Bray Wyatt would have been my next pick, you mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, yeah, it is your turn. This is number, pick number five for you. So now, since you've stole Bray, I'm going to have to go with the fallback. And it's going to go with the wild man, big guy, Luke Harper. Luke Harper. Okay. I like Luke Harper. Not bad. Why? I just like his. He's got he's got a good skill in the ring. Mm-hmm. He's a good big guy, and he's just got that wild man. He has got the quintessential like heel, the wild out crazy man. Mm-hmm. He's almost like without being completely insane. He's almost kind of got a psycho Sid thing going on for me. Really, without the psycho, hmm. like big intimidating. He'd be a good match for Ryback. I'm trying to to partner it up somewhat in some aspects, as you could see. With my first two picks. I see. Because, you know, you got to have someone for the playoff of. Right, right. Randy Orton. Randy Orton. God, I forgot about Orton, dude. <laughs> Orton's... Let me take all the old guys. <laughs> Is that how you're looking at it? <laughs> that's, kind of, that's kind of how I feel right now. You can't build the future if you don't have somebody to teach them. No, true that. So, true uh, so that. far I've got three, two teachers... Two and a half if you count Lesnar. Yeah, I got like none. <laughs> I'm like old, new school. Well, hey, I, yeah, okay. Okay, right. 
So that's going to lead me to go to someone that I was going to pick higher, but I figured I'd wait and I'd wait. I'm going to take him now, Dolph Ziggler. Nice. Because he fits in, he gels good with the, with who I've picked so far, and the guy's a workhorse, and he's not a rookie. Right. You know? I'm going with the king, Wade Barrett. That Barrett's... guy's got, he's, he's a tremendous heel. I can see him, like, you package him the right way, he can be one of the top heels. T- totally. Totally. Know? All right, who you got? Oh, man, decisions, decisions. You know what? For lack of some, as you said, teacher on my roster so far, I'm going to have to go with, with Kane. Kane? I'm going to have to throw Kane on there. Right. Um, I don't feel like Kane is, you know, in retrospect, I wish I'd have grabbed John Cena because John Cena, I feel like, is twice the wrestler Kane is. But Kane's got that experience there, man, and I feel like it's a guy that could carry some, you know, he can he puts guys over, man. Yeah. My next pick is Kofi. Kofi? Kofi Kingston. Remember, I don't, I don't think you were watching, but, like, he had a, a small push when uh, he was beefing with Randy Orton when mm-hmm. he first lost his accent. Yeah. You remember that? Mm-hmm. That showed what Kofi can do if, like, really unleashed, and he impressed the hell out of me. You know, like, the dude's got some straight talent. You know, Kofi, I've always felt Kofi is talented. Um, New Day, I thought, was a horrible thing, but New Day, I feel like, is starting to shine a little bit. I, I'm telling you, man, it was you when I was like, I think that they were planted his faces on purpose and they were those obnoxious faces mm-hmm. so they could it, properly get their heel that turned. makes absolute sense yeah well. so what pick are we at now uh this is one two three four five six you're wait one two three four five six seven your number eight pick my number eight. Oh man actually no 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 wait one two three four five six seven hard one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, okay, yeah, you're number eight. Pick. My number eight, so I got three left, huh? Man, I don't know. Are we like, not, d- dude, <laughs> I'm going to surprise you a little right now. I'm going to go Paige. <laughs> I hate you. Sorry, man. That girl is, she's awesome. All right, no problem. Divas, I'm going with Natty. That, that's a, a wise choice. She's, she can be the head of the Divas division and she can school all the new Divas. She could. She could. And that's why I'm now chose to go with, this is going to surprise me anyway, Nikki Bell. Really? She's yeah. splitting up the Bellas, huh? Yeah. Well, it's whatever, man. I feel <laughs> like Nikki's got the... They have split the Bellas up enough now that I feel like either one of them could shine on their own. Yeah. But I feel like lately, Nikki's really brought it, dude. Mm-hmm. And I really like the fact that when she showed up to help Paige, that not only did she take care of Tamina and a little girl, but that she gave Paige a little taste too. Yeah. I liked that. I'm going to have to go with Naomi because she makes a great heel. She does. She makes a really, really great heel. And I could see her having like one hell of a feud with uh, with Natty. You know, you make Natty the, the old veteran face that comes from like all this background. And right. then you have Naomi, who's married into the wrestling family now. And, dude, that's a great storyline. Uh, no, they, one they should use. I don't know why Natty doesn't get a push as it is. Oh, uh, my, got number nine. My last pick. Or, yeah, number wait, eight, nine. Yeah, your last pick. My number ten off of the main. <sighs> you all right there, <laughs> I don't know. I don't honestly. My tenth pick, I, for lack of, I can't think of anyone right now that I would want to like. Ugh, I, I just can't. So, that, um, <laughs> you know, man, I need some heels. I, I, and I know I said I hate this guy, but he's a good heel. I'm gonna take Bo Dallas. Really? Yeah. Bo Dallas. <laughs> See, now I'm on the line with my number 10 pick. Um, well, it doesn't matter. I guess I can tell you who both of them were since you can't pick anymore. Uh, I I want to give brownie points to Sheamus. You know, I'm thinking the going Sheamus route. But we're talking about brute strength. Who right now is a better brute strength heel than the Bulgarian monster? Rusev. Rusev. I will go with Rusev. It's a good pick. 
So, okay, now we have our 10 main rosters. You get mm-hmm. two NXT males and an NXT female. Who do you go with? First, for Finn Balor. Finn Ooh. Balor? Finn Balor. Nice. Well, you know who I'm going with. I'm going with my boy. Kevin Owens? Kevin Owens. That's good, because you, cause you know who I got to take next? I got to take Prince Pretty, dude. Tyler Breeze. Got to nice. take some Tyler Breeze, man. Nice. I respect the man. The man's got... I like his shtick, yeah. and he's got good skill in the ring. Nice. I'm going with Hideo. Surprised you didn't pick Corbin. All right, you got one. Uh, I like Corbin, but. One NXT Diva to, to pick. Dude, to you know who I'm picking. Really? Pick a Sasha Banks. Absolutely not. Because <laughs> I know that's who you're going to pick. You're, you're a hugger. You're picking Bailey. I'm, uh, no, yeah, I'm totally, <laughs> I'm totally picking Bailey. Who are you picking? I'm picking Alexa Bliss. Hell no, dude. Taking I'm bliss, taking huh? Becky Lynch, dude. Oh, I, I actually typed Bliss down. Did you know? Yeah. I'm Be- Lynch. Becky Lynch all the way, dude. Yeah. I'm all about the Becky Lynch. Nice. Very nice. I feel like that girl gets up to the main roster, dude. She's got... Dude, especially even though she lost to Sasha Banks, dude, it was a hell of a match. Yeah. That Everyone. girl put on a performance. My NXT diva, Charlotte. Wow. Surprise me, Charlotte. Charlotte. I've seen that lady wrestle, man. That girl can go. I see. I didn't judge it just on looks. If it was looks, of course I'd have took Sasha Banks. Yeah, no, I wasn't going on looks. Like, but no. literally right now, NXT, pound for pound, I feel like. Okay, so the for the four of you listening, favorite. we want to know, whose show do you think would be stronger? Brian's Monday Night Raw with the roster of Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, Adrian Neville, Ryback, Luke Harper, Dolph Ziggler, Kane, Paige, Nikki Bella, Bo, um, Bo Dallas, Finn Balor, Tyler Breeze, and Becky Lynch. Or my roster of SmackDown, John Cena, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, Wade Barrett, Kofi Kingston, Natty, Naomi, Rusev, um, Kevin Owens, Hideo Itami, and Charlotte. I'm going to tell you something right now. You read them out like that. I kind of started to feel bad for myself. <laughs> and then you got to the end of yours and I didn't feel so bad anymore. Oh, wow. Like, I feel like you started off strong and then you picked Kofi and it was kind of like, eh. Well, you got to have the high flyer. Yeah, that's, why I, took, have, that's why I took Neville. You got to have your top uh, mid-card guy. And my, me, my top mid-card guy would probably be Kofi. Yeah. You know? I See, I, I put a lot in the future, as you can obviously tell. I see. I put a lot of stake in the in the. The only the teacher new guard. you have is Kane. What about Ziggler? Ziggler's been around, man. Yeah, but he's still learning as Dude, well. Dude, he was the freaking Spirit Squad. <laughs> okay. Nikki. I'm not saying that that's a good thing, <laughs> but come on, the guy, the guy is one of the few wrestlers that actually wrestled during the Attitude Era. That wasn't the Attitude Era. It wasn't. When the Spirit Squad, Spirit Squad was Attitude, Attitude Era, Era was, was done towards in the like, end, wasn't it? No, Attitude Era was done in okay, in like two thousand three, two thousand four. Stone Cold was still wrestling weekly. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. No, are you sure? Spirit Squad was when it was um, when DX had their PG reunion. No. Yes. Was it really? Remember that clip I showed you where they were trying to scalp tickets off of Crime Time? Yeah. That was Spirit Squad era. No. Spirit Squad was like 07, 08. No. That was John Cena coming into his own era. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. I must have the all-timers. No. We he love Google. When did the Spirit Oops. Well, Squad... Anyway. So, give us your feedback. Let us know. Would Dave you watch Junior. Brian's Raw or Junior SmackDown? SmackDown. Uh, just post it on Facebook. Comment on the YouTube video. We'll be tweeting. I'll be posting this on there. You're going to post it? January 2006, the Spirit Squad made their television debut on the Raw brand. Wow. Now, when did the Attitude... Anyway... We're running into 45 minutes now, so I'm just going to wrap this up. Don't forget, talk about the petition. Oh, yeah. The petition, CM Punk versus JDF. Sign that stuff, change.org. We've got all over our Facebook personal pages and on Comics Remix page. Uh, I think there was even a link to it on the YouTube video for last week's, or I'm sorry, issue sixes. No, it wasn't even issue six. It was issue 50 of Breaking the Fourth Wall, our pop 
JDF CM Punk. Oh, two. People are listing it at 0102. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, so I was wrong. As always, Big B Brian Adams. Junior's. The winner of the wrestling brand, SmackDown. Boom. That's a matter of opinion. Hey, we could have went even farther. We would have been like, we would have been like, hey, pick your announced team. We could have went there. Really? Yeah. Really? You want to go there? So, uh, real quick. Let's go ahead. Real quick. Two announcers, go. Go ahead. No, ladies first. Joey Styles. Ooh, well, he's well. He's not currently on the right. He works for them, but he's not currently an announcer uh, though. That's what we're talking. Current announcers. Yeah, the way we did the brand. Current. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Man, that sucks. Uh, I'm actually surprised. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna take Bradshaw. Bradshaw. Cause the man makes me laugh, dude. Okay, so that's your. You got Bradshaw, and who else? You get another one. Oh, so you're gonna make me do both of them? Yeah, you get two. You get your play-by-play and your color, or play-by-play, since they don't really do that uh, much. Anymore. You know, only cause I got like a bit of a soft spot for this guy. Um, yeah, but he's not really. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. That's a tough decision for me, because I don't really care for, uh, uh, I forgot his name now, the guy that already does color color commentary. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Michael Cole. He does, he's supposed to be play, play by, by play. play. I don't really like Michael Cole. Okay. So uh, I don't really know what to do about that. I, I, I'm going to say, because this is what I was to say before, but then I thought he's not really play by play, but I don't really care, because... Whatever. Well, you can have him in either Corey role. Graves. Corey Graves. I kind of like Corey Graves. I like what he brings to the table. I thought about that for a second, but I'm going to have to go my play-by-play. Renee Young. My color. A heel. Jerry Lawler. Nice. Or if... Well, no, because we're doing current, so... But if, if it was, like, if Jerry Lawler... Because there's rumors if that we're they're doing trying like to X Jerry Lawler out dream. right now. No, no, no. I'm not doing dream. <laughs> I'm just saying because they're supposed to be trying to get Lawler out the door and replace him. If that were the case, I would go with a heel Michael Cole, and a and a. My dream announce team: Jr. The King. And Joey Styles. <laughs> I, I hey, I can totally see that. So, my God! Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, Jr. Look, the puppies. This has been episode seven of the Lockup. Join us back here next week when we'll talk about the fallout or uh, I shouldn't even say fallout, but the results of. The Elimination Chamber. I don't have a sound effect for that. Yeah, there's no... I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. The lockup sound again. Yeah, right. So, uh, we'll see you next week. Deuces.